Hey everyone, and today we're going to be looking at t uh, completing the square, specifically for solving quadratics. There is completing the square for um, integration and finding vertex form. That'll be hopefully next week. The integration video, maybe I'll make it, I don't know. Maybe if I feel like making a video on that, I'll make completing the square for integration. But for now, we're looking at completing the square simply to solve quadratics instead of using the quadratic formula and for cases when you can't factor. So what is completing the square? Well, let's look at this little little diagram I've drawn up here. So we have, let's say we have a square length x, meaning the other side would also be x because it's square, and we're adding a rectangle length b, height bx, or sorry, area bx, since the height bx, area bx, right? Well, the the, uh, the the point of this is when we add the this b to the x, right? We get the rectangle becomes bx, right? And it, or sorry, square becomes bx. It's no longer well square. It's a rectangle. And when it comes to quadratics, what that means is we can't easily factor. Say we have some quadratic, you you have two numbers that add up to whatever b is, but they don't necessarily multiply up to c. This is where completing the square is useful. So we add this b here, makes it a rectangle, not a perfect square, we can't factor it. So what do we do? We take b, we divide it by 2. Now we have this skinnier rectangle, we move the other half of, of b down here. This gets us x plus b over 2 which is the new height of the rectangle because we added the b over 2 onto the x. Same here, x plus b over 2 plus x plus b over 2. And we are missing this little sliver, which would be b over 2 squared since it's the same uh, length and height of b over 2, it's just the missing piece. And so essentially this is visually completing the square. We, uh, we have this little gap here and we're adding the pieces that we need to make this a perfect square. And as such, this will then, well one, it's a perfect square so we can factor, also visually we make an actual square. So with that, having some, some sort of visual intuitions for essentially saying, oh, we can't factor this quadratic because, you know, whatever C is is not a square of B, so we're going to essentially add a constant term to C to make it a perfect square. So now let's go and actually do an example. Uh, here. Ooh, that's, that doesn't look good. Uh, let, me, let me get a wider brush. There we go. All right, let me erase these shavings, and then we'll get into an example. Okay, so I didn't mention this before but in where I'm gonna have two examples. First example is what we call a monic quadratic basically meaning that the coefficient of x squared the a term is just one. So non-monic quadratics which I'll take a look at after this one are quadratics where the coefficient of a is not one. So for now we have x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Now you could try to factor this. Uh, in fact, negative 3 minus 4 uh, seems to work perfectly fine here. <laughs> I didn't think this one through, but you know. Oh well. So uh, instead, instead of factoring, we're gonna complete the square <laughs> because that's the point of this video. So step one, we have to take b as we saw with the uh, the rectangle. We want to take b and we divide it by two. Or well, I guess usually step one would be divided divide a out, but since a is one, that doesn't matter. We're going to actually subtract c, so ignore ignore the b step first. We're going to subtract c from both sides, so subtract 12 from uh, both sides. 
we get x squared minus 7x is equal to negative 12. Now we take b. We first have b and then square it. And the result of that we're going to add to both sides of the equation. So half of 7 is 7 over 2. And I should mention this is negative. So negative 7 over 2. But, you know, squaring it gets rid of the negatives. So it's not really, not too important, but just for uh, being correct. 7 over 2, negative 7 over 2 squared becomes 49 over 4. So we're going to add that to both sides of the equation. So we're going to do x squared minus 7x plus 49 over 4 is equal to negative 12 plus 49 over 4. And the reason we add this is if we were to, or sorry, the reason we add this to both sides is because if we were to add it just to one side, well, for one, that would flat out change the, the value of the equation. It's no longer the same thing. Same, same reason why you subtract a term from one side, you have to subtract it on the other to keep it consistent, otherwise it's just an entirely new equation. So now we're going to simplify the right-hand side a little bit since that you know, makes it a little easier on us. So 12 as a fraction of 12 over 1, we multiply both top and bottom by 4, we get negative 48 over 4, which plus 49 over 4 simplifies down to just positive 1 over 4. So let's rewrite the equation. So next plus 49 over 4 is equal to just positive 1 over 4. Now our goal is to factor this. Now initially factoring with um, fractions is a little difficult, but if we look at the individual, or rather the square roots of both the top and the bottom, 49 is no more than just 7 times 7, and similarly 2, or sorry, 4 is just 2 times 2. So looking at that, we look at um, negative 7 over, sorry, negative 7x here, and if we think of numbers that add up, they don't necessarily have to be whole numbers. We could try fractions, like for instance, negative 3.5 minus 3.5 is 7, and conveniently, 7 over 2 is 3.5. So let's factor, and since this one's a negative, b is negative, c is positive, we know it's going to be x minus on both, so instead of writing both out, I'm just going to have 1 uh, x minus, and then the parentheses squared, so I don't have to write both out, so we're going to have x minus, and then start the parentheses. So as I said earlier, 3.5 plus 3.5 is 7, so negative 3.5 plus negative 3.5 is negative 7, and 3.5 can be rewritten as 7 over 2, 7 over 2 squared is 49 over 4. So we found how to factor that. I'm going to leave it as 7 over 2. So we have 7 over 2 squared. And now this is equal to just 1 fourth. What we do now is we, we want to solve for x. So we're going to take the square root on both sides. Ooh, that's a bad square root. And we're going to, I'm going to do it up here because I don't want to do it on the bottom. And so the square and the square root cancel out. We're left with x equals 7 over 2 is equal to, now square root of 1 is just 1, but we're going to have 1 over the plus or minus square root of 4. And the reason we do plus or minus is because with quadratics, we are looking for two answers because they're supposed to touch the x-axis twice when dealing with real roots, which is why we have plus or minus. We don't consider just the positive one. We consider if it were negative 2 times negative 2 and 2 times 2. Now we just want to move 7 over 2 to both sides, so we add it. Sorry, we add 7 over 2 to both sides to get it to the right hand side. So this is nothing more than x is equal to 1 over 2 plus 7 over 2, which leads to, uh, what was it, 8 over 2, which is 4. So let me erase that. Oops, I didn't mean to save anything. It's just 4. So the first case is x is equal to 4. Or, that not look like an O. Or, or I guess and. 
x can also be equal to, if we were to take the negative version of the square root, we have negative 1 over 2 plus 7 over 2, which ultimately gives us 3. So that's our, uh, our two roots here. We found it by completing the square. Just to confirm graphically, I'm going to go to Desmos just to make sure. So we would have x squared plus 7x, sorry, not plus, minus 7x plus 12. We look at our roots here, we have it at 3, 0, 4, 0. So we got it on that one. Now let me erase this again. We're going to look at a non-monic example. So essentially when the uh, when the coefficient of a is, or sorry, the coefficient of x is not 1. So when a is not equal to 1. So let me find our example here. Here it is. So it is 3x squared plus 30x plus 11. And this is also equal to 0, so we're solving for the roots. And so what do we do? Well, first thing we want to do is we just have to divide the whole thing out by 3. 0 over 3 doesn't really matter. It's still 0. But the 3 here, sorry, they don't cancel out. They'll necessarily cancel out. 3 goes away here because it's dividing by 3. 30 over 3 is 10, and we're going to leave it as 11 over 3. So we have x squared plus 10x plus 11 over 3. And it's still equal to 0. Now, like we did last time, I'm going to subtract the 11 over 3 from both sides, which will leave us with x squared plus 10x, now equal to negative 11 over 3. Now, just you know, as I did last time, we're going to take half of b, which in this case is 10, we're going to square it. So half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25, and now we're going to add that to both sides. So we're left with x squared plus 10x plus 25 equal to negative 11 over 3 plus 25. So let's bring it up here. Now you can see it's starting to be easier to factor out. x squared plus 10x plus 25 is pretty easily factorable. It's going to be positive the whole way through because b is positive, c is also positive. So we're going to have x plus and then well, 5 plus 5 adds up to 10. 5 times 5 is 25, so we have x plus 5. We have this squared, and let's simplify the right-hand side. So 25 is 25 over 1. Multiply that by 3, we get 75 over 3. Now 75 minus 11 is 64, so we get 64 over 3. We can take the square root on both sides now. I should extend that, there you go. And we're going to square and the square root cancel out. And we're left with x plus 5 is equal to, well, we know the square root of 64. That's just 8. But the square root of 3 is irrational. And the first few numbers are just like 1.73, which isn't super satisfying. So we're going to use a calculator to get exact answers. And then I'll show it graphically. So now we subtract 5 from both sides. And we're left with x is equal to 8 over square root of 3 minus 5 and we're going to consider the negative version as well so we have x is equal to negative 8 over square root of 3 minus 5 now let's just do that on a calculator so we have 8 divided by the square root of 3, which is 4.618 approximately. We subtract 5, we get negative 0.381197. So that's for a positive version. So we're going to say x is approximately about negative 0 0.3811. Negative 0.3811. Yep. And now we're going to consider negative version of our square root. So we would have 8 divided by m minus, oh, nested square root, not like that. So it's just, you know, negative of our previous answer, makes sense. 
minus 5, we get negative 9.618. Approximately equal to negative 9.618. Now, just to confirm our answers, I'm going to do this on Desmos and look for our roots. So let's get rid of that. 3x squared plus 30, oops, plus, ooh, 11. So now here are our two roots. This one is at negative 0.381, which we got for a positive version, so that's good. And this one is at negative 9.619, which is just, yeah, they rounded. Makes sense. So we're pretty good. That is completing the square to solve quadratics. Hopefully next week I'll do one for putting it into vertex form. Stuff about like the axis of symmetry and minimum maximum points if you don't want to use the calculus the way that is. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching.